Nice guys of San Diego who have spent the past 40 years helping those that need just a little extra to get through tough patches. Need a wheelchair, windows, car repair, past due bills, all ready for those in need. Their motto, offering a hand up, not a hand out. And College Coach has also used that model, giving young prospects the chance to ascend to that next level, fixing those little pieces of their mental and physical game along the way. And the man who ran San Diego State basketball for the better part of three decades certainly exemplifies that on and off the court. And that is why he's their nice guy of the year. And excited to introduce this year's 2022 nice guy of the year. So please put your hands together and celebrate with me, Coach Fisher. I know what you do and how you've done it and who you've done it for. And all of you are to be commended. You've grown in the numbers, you've grown in the dollars, uh, but you continue to give and give and give. Uh, so I'm honored and thrilled to be a part of it. High praise there for the cornerstone of San Diego State. His legacy on the court, oh, it's unquestioned. Most victories in Mountain West history, 13 postseason appearances, and the highest ranked Aztecs teams on record. But this is also about his legacy in the world of health. This is a man who took the lead when his own son was diagnosed with ALS, lifting the profile of the San Diego Association there to raise funds for a cure, and who publicly inspired others to get prostate screenings after his own diagnosis. Leader winner and one heck of a nice guy. Our Allison has been speaking with him at the event. So most awards for coaches start with the sport. How does receiving an award that means more than basketball speak to your life's work? If you look at the past recipients, they're the who's who of San Diego and the community. They're givers, they're doers, they're people of influence. And to be a part of that, to be this year's recipient, uh, I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I'm very privileged to be this year's recipient. It's, it's a great honor, and I'm, I'm smart enough to know that. <laughs> and you used to hand out tickets to students on the walkway at SDSU. Now they fill an expanded arena. What does that say about you and the power of perseverance? Well, I hope they have tickets for me this year, but you're right. It's a, it's a hard ticket now, and it's a ticket that uh, carries a little prestige with it, the people that go. And I'm proud to have been a part of it. I came in 99 where there wasn't a lot of that. There was more apathy than there was interest. And we brick by brick, day by day, and you said, we ha I handed out tickets for a long time just to get people in the arena. And now they've been there, they've seen the buzz, they've seen the excitement, and they want to be part of it. So it's, it's very neat, very neat. And you didn't choose to become an advocate for ALS. It came into your life and you reacted to it. How has it all changed you as a coach, a father, and a person? I think life has a way of uh, changing plans for people. And sometimes good, sometimes not so good. But life is life, so you, you, you live it. And my oldest son, Mark, was diagnosed officially in March of 2011. And then we dug in both feet to say, what can we do to help? And his comment to his mom and I were, I don't need sympathy, I need support. And we provided that every day. And I think if there were a roadmap on how to live your life, no matter what the circumstances, you could take a snapshot of Mark Fisher. And, and that would be good for all of us to take note of. And both Steve and Mark remaining very strong in both the basketball and the ALS community. I'll see you in a few. Logan. That's